Murder to your thirst? Let's talk about death. Have you experienced any loss in your life? Yeah. Yes. Some, yeah. Yeah, I have. I've temporarily lost a lot of people, unfortunately. Uh, yes, actually. Yes, I have. Are we talking about physical loss or emotional loss? You know, loss is loss, so whichever one hits you the most. Yeah, for sure. When was this? About three, four years ago. That was 12, three weeks. Three years ago. Like four years ago. A couple months ago. Like three months ago. Oh, it was recent. Yeah, it was recent. H how was that experience? Honestly, she was like in a coma. I kind of prayed to God to like help her, you know, by take her. Because she was in pain. Yeah, I don't I don't want to see her suffer. Well, she helped raise me. It was similar to losing a parent, I would imagine. Yeah. It's definitely made me ask more questions of the adults in my life because... I realized now how much I didn't know her. It made me listen to my instincts as well because the last time I saw her, I knew, I don't know why, but I was driving away and I made my dad stop the car and I ran back to hug her again and then I never saw her again. I was kind of sad, you know, but me and him didn't really have a relationship though. So when I found out the news, it, it, it hit me, you know, it didn't really kind of affect me like I thought it would. I'm okay now because I'm able to talk about it a little bit more. I mean, I was like pretty young when it happened. I mean, I guess I was sad, but I wasn't heartbroken, I guess. At this point in my life, I'm like, it's so natural. And I believe a lot more happens after we die. Before I transition to the next question, your friend just called you heartless over there. Do you have anything to say? Well, she's my, my husband. So she can say that? <laughs> she can say it if she wants, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to talk about, obviously. I'm doing okay, you know, like, I think it was probably harder for her family and she had a boyfriend at the time, so. It, it put me at the head of the table, a lot of responsibility. It was a suicide and uh, it was a tough, he, like, four years younger than me. We was grew, grew up together and it was tough, like, uh, he was kind of addicted to drugs and alcohol and everything and his friend lose his wife. He left him and this guy make a suicide and after in one month because my brother was his like closest friend he do it with himself it was really stupid i was mad at him because he did it like he he left all of us and he did it if he can hear us i'm mad at you rob <laughs> his name rob as well you know obviously losing your mom or dad is pretty hard but i mean you know, a lot of the times, death's not really a bad thing. It's usually a, a good place to go to, you know? So uh, I think she's in a better place than she was here. So I feel like that gives me a little relief to go and go skate or do whatever, right? Do you feel like even though it wasn't a biological loss, you still felt as if you were truly grieving, even though the person's still alive? Yeah, I think so. I mean, in in the past, we, I broke up with this person before. It was uh, maybe a slower grief. Uh, so at this point, when it was the final stretch, uh, I kind of probably processed the thing beforehand so I felt uh, that uh, it was more acceptance so it was different maybe from the other times well, I think there's a bigger meaning to everything and our instincts tell us a lot if we lean into those and trust them more and it can only benefit us right I love that how are you figuring out to move forward Cause again three weeks is nothing so what have you learned in regards to moving forward it's putting a lot into perspective for me about how precious life is and just to be grateful for everything and just the small things that we worry about every day aren't worth it especially like you don't know how much longer you have here on earth or anyone around you there's nothing that tells you like this person that you love or you're around daily you only have six months left with them and just kind of having all of my interactions now in that sense where I don't know how long, much longer I'm gonna have this so just really taking it in and being in the moment. I think life is short. I think about how I knew her for so long, but it doesn't feel like a long time because we're young still. I guess I think about like, I, I want to try to live remembering her well. And also like, if I'm being really melodramatic, like live my life for her too. Well, I mean, you're remembering her right now. So I hope that means something yeah. to you and I appreciate you opening up. Is there anything that you feel like you're doing to work through it? Cried a lot. I think having her actually with her more normalized version of death has been really helpful actually because I don't know what happens and she's the spiritual one. There you go. You got a good team going there helping you. Yeah. She gives me hope when this go. kind of stuff comes up. A little bit of hope goes a long way, right? When you say temporary, could you elude on that a little bit? Well, our souls are eternal and love never dies. My master here has taught me that, my guru. He shows me how love never dies and from, from body to body, soul transfers from body to body to body. So when my best friends or loved ones or anybody, they're gone temporarily, but they come back. Is there anything you believe happens after death? I think our spirit goes to eternal life, heaven or whatever if that's what you believe in. Well, why do you believe that? Because uh, I believe in God. You know, I just believe your spirit, you know, goes with God. I haven't had that experience of death yet, so I can't really say. People say heaven or hell, 
There's no proof. You have to die to be able to understand. People apparently had died and come back to life. They say there's heaven or hell. Who knows? I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not God. Maybe God is within me. Yeah. But I'm not a. I'm not the creator. Pretty sure it's whatever we were before we were born, which is nothing. Does that make grief harder or or easier to know that there's nothing after? I think it's just strange. It just seems surreal that somebody could just be not here anymore. I think that you there is like a, a plane where people can stick around and come and you can see them in like animals or signs. I think signs are a very real thing that people can hold on to. I don't know. I wish there is something more because, uh, you know, stepping onto the next level would be fun. I also think you should live in a way as if uh, once you're, you know, down there, nothing else happen. You Wait, know? down there? Yeah, I mean, if you get uh, buried. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were talking about hell. Okay. Our earth bodies return to the earth and then our soul goes out and goes on to live the next life times. What makes you believe that? Fucking faith. I don't know. <laughs> Spirituality. <laughs> when you move on, where you are in your point of consciousness will project you into the next reality that you're going to be in. So when you die, make sure you're happy and you're, you've done everything you wanted to do here. And more of that will come to you, whatever you're doing when you die. Honestly, I have no idea. But, you know, with death, it's like, I guess it's like life. Like, you basically go to a whole other dimension. And um, I don't know, you might get some, you might get some cool things happening out there. I don't know, you might get some girls and shit, or you might just you know maybe smoking joints out there is better skating out there there might be no gravity i have no idea so you know i'm wondering i think it might be good but i think it's revert yeah i'm not trying to promote death yeah. you know <laughs> are you scared of dying no i'm not nah. no why is that when it's time to come it's time to come when it's my time it's my time i can't control life i could die tomorrow today who knows i'm just gonna enjoy my life in limitless i was for a long time actually i spent about two years every single night going to bed being afraid i would die in my sleep because a friend of mine that happened to her husband and he was 24, he just died one night. And so I spent every single night, it was actually around COVID time when everybody was freaking out about dying randomly as well from, you know, like touching something at the grocery store. I spent every single night trying not to think about dying um, and hoping I would wake up in the morning until finally I decided that it was wasting my time and I didn't want to feel afraid all the time, that I wasn't actually afraid of dying. And I, I imagined dying and I thought about the reality of it and I just, actually accepted it instead of it being this scary thing that I couldn't handle. And now I, I feel at peace with the idea. I am, yeah. What scares you? When I close my eyes and I imagine I'm not gonna feel anything, that makes me freak out. Nah, every time I, I feel like I'm about to die, I say, God, if I suffer this a million times, please just let me complete all the tests I have or at least this one and the next one too. No, not really. You know, they say you was born to die, so it's kind of like, just natural. But we ain't dead yet. Right, exactly. There we go. No, death is the ultimate orgasm. You just don't want to orgasm too quick. That's it. Do you guys want to talk about death? 